Greetings to all of you, my dear sisters and brothers and my dear friends, and all of you are welcome to my new broadcasting of the School of Prayer. And today we're going to talk about in that day or the Holy Spirit and prayer. This is your pastor, Yadi. And the scriptures for today are from the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 16, verse 23 to 24, and 26 to 26 to 27, and Jude, verse 20 and 21. And in that day you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. In that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you. John 16, the verses 23 to 24, and 26 and 27, for those who are coming later in. And praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God. Jude 20 and 21. The words of John and 1 John chapter 2, verse 12 to 14, to little children, to young men, and to fathers, suggest the thought that there often are in the Christian life three great stages of experiences. The first, that of the newborn child, with the assurance and the joy of forgiveness. The second, the transitional stage of struggle and growth in knowledge and strength. Young men growing strong in God's word, doing its work in them, and giving them victory over the evil one. And then, the final stage of maturity and ripeness, the fathers who have entered deeply into the knowledge and fellowship of the Eternal One. I say, young women growing strong and God's Word doing its work in them and giving them victory over the evil one. And the final stage of the maturity and ripeness, as well as said to the fathers, as well it is, Mothers who have entered deeply into the knowledge and fellowship of the Eternal One. <clears throat> In Christ's teaching on prayer, there appear to be three stages in prayer life, all somewhat similar. In the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, we have the initial stage. His teaching is all comprised in one word. Pray to your Father, for your Father sees, hears, knows, and will reward. How much more than any earthly father? Only be childlike and trustful. And again I say also for mothers. Then comes later on something like the transition stage of conflict and conquest in words like this. This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him? And then we have in the parting words a higher stage. The children have become men. They are now the master's friend from whom he has no secrets, to whom he says, All things that I heard from my Father I have made known to you, and to whom in the often repeated, repeated whatever you desire. He hands over the keys of the kingdom, and now the time has come for the power of prayer in his name to be proved. The contrast between his final stage and the previous preparatory ones are Savior marks most distinctly in the words we are to meditate on. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name, and in that day you will ask in my name. We know what in that day means. 
It is the day of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the great work Christ was to do on the cross, the mighty power and the complete victory to be manifested in his resurrection and ascension, were both to allow in the coming down from heaven, as never before, of the glory of God to dwell in man. The spirit of the glorified Jesus was to come and be the life of his disciples. And one of the marks of that wonderful spirit dispensation was to be a power in prayer until then unknown, prayer in the name of Jesus, asking and obtaining whatever they desired, is to be the manifestation of the reality of the Spirit's indwelling. The great work Jesus began on earth of reconcile, reconcil, excuse me. The great work Jesus began on earth of reconciling in his own body, God and man, he carries on in heaven. To accomplish this, he took up unto his own person the conflict between God's righteousness and our sin. On the cross, he once and for all ended the struggle in his own body, and then he ascended to heaven, so that from there he might, in each member of his body, carry out the deliverance and manifest the victory he had obtained. It is to do this that he always lives to pray. In his unceasing intercession, he places himself in living fellowship with the unceasing prayer of his redeemed ones. In other words, it is his unceasing intercession that shows itself in their prayers and gives them a power they never had before. And he does this through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the glorified Jesus, was not and could not be until he had been glorified. This gift of the Father was something distinctively new and entirely different from what the Old Testament saints had known. The work that the blood effected in heaven when Christ entered within the veil was something so true and new. The redemption of our human nature into fellowship with his resurrection power and his exaltation glory was so intensely real and the taking up of our humanity in Christ into the life of the three one God was an event of such inconceivable significance that the Holy Spirit, who had to come from Christ's exalted humanity to testify in our hearts of what Christ had accomplished, was indeed no longer only what he had been in the Old Testament. It was literally true that the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. He came now first as the Spirit of the glorified Jesus, even as the Son, who was from eternity God, had entered into a new existence as man and returned to heaven with what he did not have before. So the blessed Spirit, whom the Son and his ascension received from the Father, into his glorified humanity, came to us with a new life, which he had not previously communicated. Under the Old Testament, he was invoked as the Spirit of God. But at Pentecost, he descended as the Spirit of the glorified Jesus, bringing down and communicating to us the full fruit and power of the accomplished redemption. It is in the intercession of Christ that the continued effectiveness and applications of his redemption is maintained. And it is through the Holy Spirit descending from Christ to us that we are drawn up into the great stream of his always ascending prayers. The Spirit prays for us without words. In the depths of a heart where every thought are at times without form, the Spirit takes up 
unto the wonderful flow of the life of the Three One God. Through the Spirit, Christ's prayers become ours, and ours are made His. We ask what we desire, and it is given to us. We then understand from experience. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Is that day, and in that day, you will ask in my name. My brother and sister, what we need to pray in the name of Christ to ask to receive so that our joy may be full is the baptism of his Holy Spirit. This is more than the Spirit of God under the Old Testament. This is more than the Spirit of conversion and regeneration the disciples had before Pentecost. This is more than the Spirit when in measure of his influence and working. This is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the glorified Jesus in his exaltation power, coming on us as the spirit of the indwelling Jesus, revealing the Son and the Father within us. It is when this spirit is the spirit not of our ours, if not of our hours of prayer, but of our whole life and walk. I say this again. It is when this spirit is the spirit not of our hours of prayer, but of our whole life and walk. When this Spirit glorifies Jesus in us, be revealing the completeness of his work and making us completely one with him and like him, that we can pray in his name, because we are in very deed one with him. That is then that we have that immediateness of access to the Father of which Jesus says, I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father for you. Oh, how we need to understand and believe that to be filled with this, the Spirit of the Glorified One is the one need of God's believing people. And then we realize what it is, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the Spirit, and what it is to be, praying in the Spirit, keep ourselves in the love of God. In that day, you will ask in my name. So once again, the lesson comes. What our prayer benefits depends on what we are and what our life is. It is living in the name of Christ that is the secret of praying in the name of Christ and living in the Spirit that makes us fit for praying in the Spirit. It is abiding in Christ that gives us the right and power to ask what we desire. The extent of the abiding is the exact amount of the power in prayer. It is the Spirit's dwelling within us who prays, not in words and thoughts always, but in a breathing and being deeper than words. Only as much as there is of Christ's Spirit in us is there real prayer. Our lives, our lives. Oh, let our lives be full of Christ and full of Spirit, and then the wonderfully unlimited promises to our prayer will no longer appear strange. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. In that day, you will ask in my name. Most surely, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Let us pray. O oh my God, in holy awe I bow before you, the three in one. Again I have seen how the mystery of prayer and the mystery of the Holy Trinity. I adore the Father who ever hears and the Son who ever lives to pray, and the Holy Spirit who proceeds from the Father and the Son to lift us up into the fellowship of the ever-blessed never ceasing asking and receiving. I bow, my God, in adoring worship before the infinite reaching down that in this way, through the Holy Spirit, takes us and our prayers into the divine life and its fellowship of love. My dear Lord, my blessed Jesus, 
Teach me to understand your lesson, that it is the indwelling Spirit who streams from you, is united to you, and who is the Spirit of prayer. Teach me what it is, an empty, completely dedicated vessel, and to yield myself to his being my life. Teach me to honor and trust him as a living person, to lead my life in prayer. Teach me, specifically in prayer, to wait in holy silence and give him place to breathe within me, his unspeakable intercession. And teach me that through him it is possible to pray without ceasing and without failing, because he makes me a partaker of the never-ceasing and never-failing intercession in which you, the Son, appears before the Father. Yes, Lord, fulfill in me your promise. In that day you will ask in my name. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. We ask this in the wonderful and powerful name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you doubt, it's normal. If you have questions, that's normal. But try to stay close to Jesus because the gift is already given. I cannot say it enough. The disciples had to wait for 10 days in Jerusalem and they waited in prayer and fasting. And then he came. Pentecost came. The birth of the church. Blessings to all of you, my dear ones. You're precious to God. Never forget that. I love you guys. Bye.